Today on Guitar Guy 1, we're gonna do the funnest, most amazing thing ever been done on television history ever. I'm gonna change guitar strings. So we're gonna give you a good overview of the tools of the trade. Um, these are things that I pretty much use on every guitar string change that I do. Uh, if I'm going to bother to tear all the strings off a guitar, I'm probably gonna do a couple extra things while I'm in there. Uh, but starting on the left side, uh, unbelievably, yes, you are gonna need guitar strings to change strings. It's crazy, I know, but um, the next thing is a guitar polishing cloth. Uh, you don't have to have a guitar specific cloth. Don't let somebody tell you that. You can use old t-shirts, you can use whatever you like, as long as it's not an abrasive material, nice soft cotton, whatever. Uh, and if you have a time machine, you can go get yourself a high quality Feldudo Studios guitar polishing cloth that I have left over from my dad's guitar shop from when I was a kid. Uh, the next item is a side cutter. Uh, you don't have to have a side cutter specifically, a pair of pliers with a wire cutter in the center of it is just fine. In fact, I even prefer that, to be honest. They're a little bit heavier and easier to work with, I think. Um, but if, of all these things, uh, the most invaluable tool for this job, in particular to me, is a string winder. Uh, I've been doing this for almost 20 years and, well, probably over 20 years actually, and I can never get clean, tight winds without a string winder. And so spending a couple bucks on a string winder, best investment you'll ever make in your life. They even make ones that attach to the chuck of a drill and you can blast away with an electric drill and just get those strings wound up. Never had one, it's probably crazy, but anyway. Uh, next item is guitar polish. Uh, if you're gonna, like I said, already have the guitar torn apart, spray some of that stuff on there, polish it up, why not? Uh, in today's example, we're gonna be doing a guitar with a fixed bridge, but if you have a double locking, tremolo, Floyd Rose, Kaler, whatever it is, licensed, uh, you're gonna need some extra tools. And I keep those in one of these Magnum pill bottles that uh, crazy people have, old people have, pill addicts have, whatever. Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna need some Allen wrenches and some extra parts to, to get that Floyd taken apart. I have some other little screwdrivers in there too if I'm doing pickup height adjustments, things like that. It's just a good way of keeping everything tidy. Uh, and if you have none of this stuff, if you've never had any of these things before, uh, in this case this is Fender, but, but just about every company makes a package like this where it comes with polishing cloths and wipes and picks and memorabilia kind of things. They're kind of collectible anyway, they're kind of cool. Might save you a couple bucks overall, and it'll get your foot in the door and get you going. So, uh, now that we've had a look at all the stuff, let's get into the job. So the first thing you're going to need is uh, a space. A table is fine, uh, a workbench is fine, your bed, the floor, uh, it just has to be an open expanse that you can lay guitar down on. In this case, uh, we have a wooden coffee table that we stole at four o'clock in the morning out of somebody's uh, refuse, uh, if you need to know. Uh, pretty sweet deal. But uh, first thing you want to do is lay down something like a beach towel with shells on it, uh, or whatever you have handy. Just so you're not scratching the guitar. That's all that's for. So, uh, in this case, we're gonna be doing the Zach Myers Paul Reed Smith SE model. Um, so, uh, shockingly enough, yes, we're going to have to get the existing strings off before we can put new ones on. And we're going to do a couple things in between also during that process. Now, uh, if my camera person can give me a shot of this down here, um, this bridge is held on to the guitar by tension. Okay, so you have these, uh, these posts that the bridge is hooked onto and the string tension is what holds that against the guitar. Lots of guitars have uh, things that, that, that are only held on by tension, okay? So some guitars, when you start taking strings off, you might start having parts come off. Don't worry, you didn't break it. Uh, that's totally normal, just, just, just you know, kind of be aware of what's going on with your particular guitar as you're doing these things. Um, I'll also say too, they make these, um, uh, these holders that uh, sort of prop up the headstock a little bit and they're, they're padded and they're, they're really handy and they're nice and mine's packed away somewhere and uh, I just recently moved back into this house and, uh, and I'm not going to bother finding it for you. So if you'd like to have one, that's something you can be aware of. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is, is take these strings off. And we talked earlier about the indispensable string winder. It also functions very well as a string unwinder. 
So, um, I'm going to start with the low E string here, and uh, this isn't rocket science. Uh, you're simply just going to uh, unwind uh, that string and remove it. So, I'm going to go ahead and take off all six of these, and then we're going to come on back, okay? Okay, so we got all the strings off of the guitar, and uh, there's a couple things that, that I noticed right away, which is we have a little couple little flecks of uh, metal from the strings uh, that we removed, and so we're going to get that off. But otherwise, this this is honestly got a brand new guitar, um, and so there's there's not a whole lot to be done. Um, the frets on the guitar uh, have a lifespan. Uh, you have metal on metal contact constantly the whole time that you're playing and eventually you're going to get gouges, you're going to get dings and divots and scratches and uh, eventually it'll affect the intonation of the guitar uh, and at that point uh, you, might, you might need to uh, polish your frets, have them recrowned, have them replaced, those kinds of things. But now is always a good time to check in on your frets and as you're getting minor damage uh, you can actually buff them back out and get them almost like new again. And in another video, I'm going to show you how to do that. But in this case, there's no need for that. Uh, and so all I'm going to do is go over the guitar with uh, the polishing cloth and just, just kind of get the debris out. Again, you're going to get little flecks of metal from the strings being removed. Um, you're going to get little smudges from touching the guitar, that kind of stuff. And when you're working around these posts, um, be careful because if you start turning these, you're going to adjust uh, the action of the bridge itself. So don't start screwing around with those screws. Okay, so uh, we're going to start getting into this. Now, again, I went ahead and just removed that bridge. We talked about how this bridge is just held on by tension. Okay, so when it sits on the guitar, it sits on these posts like this. Okay, and so it's nothing to take it off, it's nothing to take it back on, it's not a big deal. So as long as I got it off, I'm just going to go ahead and get my grubby little paw prints off of there. Um, and we're pretty much ready to string it back up. And I will give it a good polish when we're all done. Uh, so there's that. Now, with this particular kind of bridge, uh, this is exactly like uh, a Les Paul Jr. style bridge, where the strings are actually going to feed in uh, from the bridge pickup side, loop around and come back over the top, and uh, they have these permanent uh, saddles. Uh, th these grooves here act as like a pre-saddle, I'm going to call it, and somebody else is going to yell at me and tell me that's a stupid name. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, so uh, today we're going to be using the Dario strings, and they're kind of cool in a way only because they're color-coded. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly not the end of the world if your strings aren't, and I usually don't use the Dario's, to be honest, anyway, but uh, that is kind of a handy feature. So when you open up a pack of guitar strings, you're going to find, in this case, six tightly coiled uh, strings. Okay. Uh, and what I like to do is work from the outsides in when I'm replacing strings, uh, especially with a bridge like this. Because again, until there's something anchoring this thing on, it's just going to keep flopping around on you and it gets pretty annoying pretty quickly. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is find uh, the high E string. And I have these memorized because uh, I've been doing this for longer than I'd like to think about. And these are stuck together, which I've, I don't remember ever seeing this happen before. Live coming at you, real life stuff. Uh, so that's kind of annoying, but um, yeah. So the silver ended, and, and 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 again, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear about this before. The ends of these strings, the ball end, are color coded uh, by gauge, which in our case we just we just say by string, you know. So you're like, for example, you'd use this 10 gauge string as a high E, but. Uh, if, if you were playing lighter strings, maybe a 10 gauge wouldn't be an E, you'd be using it as a B or something like that. So, okay. First thing we're going to do, and you know what, why don't we just give you a little bit of a shot of this here, so you can see what I'm talking about. There's holes here to feed the string through and around this bridge. Okay, that's how this particular style of bridge works. You also have string through guitars where the strings come up through the back, you have double locking. Maybe in the future we can make some more videos. This is just a good general overview. Uh, so the first thing is the high E. 
And so I fed the string through. Uh, the ball end is on uh, the pickup side. And we're going to come over the top, feed through this little uh, notch here, this little ramp that goes up and over the saddle. Okay, So we're over the saddle. We're going to go over the nut. And so, of course, you need to get to your corresponding nut slot. And this is the part where people are going to get all up in arms. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you what my dad taught me when I was a kid, what Dan Earlwine writes about in his books, what all kinds of guitar techs talk about. Uh, general, general rule of thumb for me. Okay, and if you do it differently, that's super, and uh, I, I hope you're happy with it. I cut my strings to tuning posts beyond the tuning post that I'm actually going to. Okay, I leave that much string on the guitar still. So I'm going to cut the string right here, and these pliers are horribly, these side cutters are horribly rusted, which is great. Uh, but I'm going to cut it right about there. Okay, now here's the other thing, and this is important for these three on a side headstocks. Okay, the general rule of thumb is, this is what is uh, common law, this is what you would expect when you pick up a guitar, unless you're my brother, because he likes to do things his own way and it doesn't drive me crazy. Uh, the bass side strings are going to uh, increase in tension when tuning away from you, and the treble side strings uh, raise the tension by tuning towards the body of the guitar. Okay, so bass strings this way, treble strings this way. That's the universal standard. So what we're going to do is feed a little bit of the string through this first uh, tuning post. Okay, so this is going to be our high E. This is where your string winder is just essential. If you do this by hand, you can be really, really careful. You can keep good tension on it while you're, uh, you're tightening the string and all that, and the winds will just never be as clean and tight as they are when you use a string winder. Um, that's my opinion. If you have a better way of doing it, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments. Send me a video. Uh, but for us mere mortals, uh, this, this is my best way of doing it that I've ever known. So we're going to be tuning, or I'm sorry, tightening this way because we want the tension going that way. And I have no other strings on here, so I'm going to go ahead and just move these out of my way. And I'm just going to start winding. And again, I got less than half an inch of string uh, poking through, and I'm going underneath the string that's sticking out. Okay, and at this point, I'm not too concerned with where the string is sitting over the nut slot. I'm not concerned with the saddle yet. I'm not concerned with anything yet. It's once I start reaching a point of tension, then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that everything's lined up just right. So I'm doing this relatively slowly just because I want you to get a really good idea of what I'm doing. Uh, and then we're going to repeat this process six times, believe it or not. Okay, so at this point, I'm making sure that I'm over the nut, and then I'm going to make sure that I'm over the saddle, and I'm going to make sure that I'm over this, this correct notch on the end of the bridge. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up just a little bit more, just so we're under tension. And that's it for right now. Don't worry about bringing it up the pitch. You're just putting a little bit of tension on it just so it's going to hold this bridge in place. So the next string I'm going to do is going to be this low E. I'm going to work inward, okay? And then we're going to come back. So I just wanted to show you guys this last string that I'm working on. Uh, and so I, I wanted you guys to get a good shot of the winding process. I realized that we didn't really maybe get that so good. Um, the other thing is, too, when you're down here, if you don't turn the balls uh, on the ends of the strings, uh, they, they won't go in properly, okay? And so you, you want to make sure that you're turning the string itself, and I hope you can see that in the shot. Uh, again, if you don't have it lined up correctly, uh, the ball won't feed completely into, uh, into the bridge where it needs to be. So again, we're coming up and over the saddle, over the nut slot. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the string to length. And, and, and this is also good for you to see too. There are no more tuning posts. So I can't really get exactly two, toning, two tuning posts uh, where the string here. So I'm just approximating. Uh, sorry, these side cutters are garbage. 
Okay. Now, this is what I wanted you to see from this angle. Just, just so you got it at home, just, just so I know you guys can see this. So we're sliding through the center of the tuning post. And again, we're on the base side of the headstock. So I'm going to be tightening going this way. And so I'm leaving about that much string poking through. And I don't know if you can see it on any of the other ones, but you can see how nice and clean and tight those winds are. It's not just because I'm a superstar, which I am. But uh, yeah, that's just what happens when you use a string winder. Just everything tightens up really, really nice. It's clean. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just wind this on. And by the way, with that little ramp there behind the saddle, uh, I find that for the most part, these things just feed on perfectly with, with really no uh, intervention from you at all. They just, they just go where they're kind of supposed to go. Other guitars don't seem to do that as well. So I'd say this is a really good design. Okay, so look at that. I, I did nothing here. Uh, string went exactly where it was supposed to go. And we have a minimal amount of tension on the guitar right now for the string tension that is. So this is the part where uh, you might get some more useful information. And, and again, for guys that have been doing this for a million years, I completely understand that you might learn nothing here or pick up anything here. Uh, I mean, I'm certainly no world expert or anything like that, but you know, I've been doing this a long time. Here's the deal. Um, when you have, and, I'm, and, and I don't know if this will come up in focus in the camera or not. I, I hope it does, but if it doesn't, that's okay. But what's happening is on uh, the thicker strings, you have a steel core, okay, that runs through the center of the string, and then it's wound around uh, with, with, with more steel, all right? And so you have metal, and metal is flexible. And so what happens is when you put a new set of strings on the guitar, uh, those strings are going to continue to stretch. And so right now, doing absolutely nothing, just doing what we've done, if I go ahead and put this guitar up to pitch, that is, I, I, I tune these strings up to where they're supposed to be, uh, as you're playing the guitar over the next couple days, that's, those strings are going to continue to stretch, and they're going to go out of tune. And so uh, to negate that process, what we're going to do, <coughs> starting with the low E string, is we're just going to yank the hell out of these. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a good thing to do. And so what I do is I just grasp the string between my index finger and thumb and uh, going from the bridge all the way up to the nut, I just do this. And I mean you're, you're, you're pulling it and you're shaking it because that's going to happen. The stretching is going to happen. And so if we do this, just tune the guitar up a little bit and as, and as it's pressed against the wood of the table you can really hear it. Okay, so now as we stretch and pull, uh, it's gonna it's gonna uh, decrease in tension because that string is still stretching um, And so and, and you don't have to do this forever or anything like that But we just kind of go up and down the entire length of the string and just Stretch it and it might continue to settle out a little bit But this really expedites the process and there's nothing worse than getting on stage and you bend a string and guitar goes out of tune That's just the worst so, uh, I'm going to repeat that process for all six strings. In fact, I'm going to do that while I'm just talking to you. Uh, there's not a whole lot left to do. Uh, as we had mentioned, uh, this guitar is basically brand new. Brand new. Um, so, there's, as far as polishing goes, cleaning it up goes, there's, there's not a whole lot to be done. Uh, anything that I would do is just really for the sake of the video. Uh, and so for that reason, just flash forward in, in time and space, go get yourself a Feldudo Studios polishing cloth while you're in your time machine, uh, and here we are. And so what I would do at this point would be to just go ahead, uh, put a couple puffs of uh, any quality spray will do. It doesn't matter what it is. There's, you know, everybody claims to be the best. Everybody, what they have is the greatest, and they'll tell you that, and sure. Um, and... Usually I would have conditioned the fretboard also uh, before we put the strings on, but again, this thing's brand new and it was already just done, it was just done. So uh, what we're going to do is just go ahead, wipe this polish around, uh, you're, you're cleaning, you're buffing, you're shining, you're doing all those things and, and, and just, you know, one step pretty much at this point. Uh, and you're just really going to get a nice shine back on your guitar. 
And uh, it's, it's funny, I was just telling my girlfriend this, uh, seriously, and I'm not kidding, when I was a kid, part of my chores, in addition to like mowing the lawn and, and those kinds of things, I had to change my dad's guitar strings. And before every gig that he played, he used to gig all the time, which was an awesome way to grow up, by the way. For me, I've been running like PA cables and things like that since I was a little kid helping him set up. But uh, yeah, I had to change his strings and polish up his guitars. And before every gig, he would change his strings. And if you don't stretch them out, your strings are going to keep going out of tune. Uh, and again, if you're going to be on stage, why have a pawed up, disgusting guitar uh, when you're supposed to be looking your best? You know, and, and like my pet peeve is when people leave like five miles of strings off the end of their headstock. And we saw that in my PRS video the other day. I, I, had a, uh, actually the guitar player in my band was borrowing that guitar and uh, he did that, which is fine, but uh, so we do the same thing on the back. Just hit it with a once over with any quality polish, any decent polishing cloth will do just fine. Um, and, and that's about it. And uh, I had a guitar tech friend of mine when I was a kid who was actually passed away now, but he always said, uh, strings are like underwear, you know, you, you want to change them as often as you can. Uh, and that's that's pretty much a good rule of thumb. So, um, aside from tuning the guitar up, it's really not too much to tell you. Uh, and uh, honest, honestly, I've been using my cell phone. I've been using my cell phone for a while now. I have a tuning app. I'll just lay it down. Uh, it'll give me the tones that I need. I just put the guitar up the pitch, and that's it. So, thanks for watching Guitar Gear 1. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me if there's anything else you guys want to see. If there's gear you want me to review, uh, if you're a guitar builder, you want to send me something to check out, you want me to put it on the show, I'll do it. If you have a band shirt you want me to wear, send it to me. Happy to do that. And uh, hope to see you guys around. Thanks so much.